Welcome to Landscape Design Masterclass. I'm Katherine Ahrensberg and today is the very first lesson. And the first thing we're going to learn is about how to uh, prepare for your design and also uh, create a base plan. So let's get started. The materials that I told you guys that you needed the other day are your pencil, your grid paper, your scale, your measuring tape. Most of those things are going to come into play today. So the very first thing you want to do after you've gathered all your materials is to get outside and take the measurements of your job site. If that's just your front yard, if it's just your backyard, whatever it is, how big or how small, it doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're getting all of your measurements. Um, this is a base plan that I would create normally. It's to scale. I print it out for my clients and then get to work on that. But if it's your own house, just take a simple white sheet of paper, go outside with your measuring tape, get the measurements, and then draw them really simply back and forth here and then write the measurements in. Like if this was 12 feet, 4 feet, 6 feet, just like this. Once you get those measurements done, then you can apply them to your grid paper to scale, what we call to scale. And that basically means that each one of these squares represents an amount of space in your yard. So let's say that each one of these squares represents one foot or two feet or four feet. It doesn't matter what that scale is, it's just so that you can um, fit everything that you've measured out onto this grid paper for you to work on. A couple of things to note whenever you're measuring for your base plan. One is that you don't have to be super specific about those measurements. You can round off to the nearest six inches or the nearest foot and it's going to be okay. It doesn't have to be an exact science for measuring your space. The other thing is to make sure that you're noting and measuring on your plan um, any large elements that you want to remain on your job site. So any trees, any uh, existing fountains or um, pergolas or walkways, driveways, anything like that, you also want to measure on the plan so that you know how much space you have to work around and where those elements exist on your job site. Now that you have your measurements, you want to apply them to your grid paper. Um, again, you get to choose what the scale is for this plan. Um, if each one of these represents one foot or four feet, that's completely up to you. Just make sure, again, that what you have measured can fit onto your plan. So, for example, if you know the total with all the measurements that you have counted up when you're measuring your outside space, if it adds up to 100 feet from side to side, you need to make sure that that will fit onto this plan. So choose a um, scale, is what we call it, um, that will fit appropriately. So if 100 feet has to fit across here, each one of these squares needs to probably be about uh, maybe 8 or 10 feet, maybe even 20 feet, depending. So. Um, just keep that note whenever you guys are drawing. So once you have that um, in your head and you have all your measurements together, you can start drawing. So if, let's say, I'm going to use a scale of one inch equals four feet. That's a quarter inch scale. So if each one of these equals four feet, I can draw straight down, maybe four, eight, 12, 16 feet, and turn and measure 20 feet, and then down. So you guys get the idea that that's how you draw um, your base plan. Once you get finished, you'll have an outline. Now this one isn't on grid paper, but you guys can see that you'll have an outline of your house and that will show you exactly where all of your base points are. That's just the base to get started. All right, we've got the base plan done, but there's still some more information that you need to gather from your own job site to make sure that you have everything you need all in one spot to get started on the plan. One of those things is photographs. You don't want to be popping out the door every single time. You will need to look at an element. So just make sure that you're taking plenty of photographs from every angle of your yard so that you can reference those back as you're working. I like to go wide, step back really far, get the whole space in the photo, and then step forward and get some really close-up shots next to the porch, into little nooks and crannies, all the way around from the side, from the front, so you have a very good uh, not 360, I guess it's like a 180 flat view of the space that you're going to be working with. Other things that you want to take note of and maybe write a list of are things like the sun requirements in your yard. If you're a north facing wall, it's going to be a pretty shady condition. If you're a south facing wall, it's going to be a pretty sunny condition, depending on what your trees are like. So just take note of how much sun is coming into the space that you're going to be designing throughout the day. So step out during several times during the day, take notes so that you know how much sun you're getting. Full sun is, is um, assumed to be about eight hours of sun in 
a spot. Partial is about four to six hours, and then full shade pretty much is shady all the time. It might get a couple of hours of morning sun and everything else is shady. So that's kind of some definitions and parameters so that you'll understand what sun, part sun, and shade really mean for your space. Another thing that you may think about including in your note taking is if you have wet or dry soil in your space because that's going to determine some plant material that can or cannot be used in your space. And then any elements that you want to include. If you've got a big uh, container or a fountain that you've purchased or something that you want to place into the space, if there's any plants that you've been dying to try out or want to use in the space, maybe take notes of those. And then also if there's any color combination that you like or colors that you love or don't love, make sure that you're noting those. Sometimes those come so innately to us that we don't need to write them down. You know if you love or hate red or blues or any of those things. Typically um, people like to stick within color palettes. You naturally have this in your head. You either love blues, whites, and greens or you love um, the hotter colors, which are the oranges, reds, and yellows. So just take note in your mind because once we get to plants, all of those are going to be really important. So that's all you need. Now that you've gathered all of your information, you have everything you need to start drawing those bedlines, which is what we're going to do in lesson two. Um, until next week, I'm Katherine Ahrensberg. You guys get out there, share this video with anybody who's interested in learning about landscape design, and also comment below if there's anything I've missed, if you have any questions. Make sure that we're keeping this conversation going because I want to make sure that you guys are designing the very best landscape you can. All right, I'll see you guys next week for lesson two.